हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक इन यूनिट टू एपिस्टमोलॉजी द वर्ड हैज बीन डिराइव फ्रॉम अ ग्रीक वर्ड मीनिंग नॉलेज सो एपिस्टमोलॉजी इज द ब्रांच ऑफ फिलोसफी व्हिच इज कंसर्न विद द थ्योरी नेचर एंड ओरिजिन ऑफ नॉलेज द टर्म वाज फर्स्ट यूज्ड बाय अ स्कॉटिश फिलोसोफर कॉल्ड जेम्स फ्रेडरिक फेरियर he coined the term to designate that branch of philosophy which aims to discover the meaning of knowledge and called it the true beginning of philosophy now epistemology studies the nature and scope of knowledge and the justified belief it analyzes the nature of knowledge and relates it to similar similar notions such as truth belief justification etc we all as humans wish to comprehend the world we live in and many of us have constructed theories mostly philosophers like aristotle have constructed theories of various kinds to help them make sense of it because many aspects of the world defy an easy explanation however most people are likely to cease their efforts at some point and to content themselves with whatever degree of understanding they have managed to achieve but unlike most people philosophers are captivated by some would say obsessed by the idea of understanding the world in the most general way possible so they attempt to construct theories that are descriptive and accurate and self explanatory and powerful as well and rational as far as possible in doing so they carry the process of inquiry further than what general people tend to do now we've also got some major issues in epistemology that can be classified into five areas beginning with the fundamental relationship between consciousness and the reality then we have got nature and validity of sense perception we have also got nature of concepts and the relation between abstractions and concrete particulars nature and validation of axioms especially the laws of identity and causality and lastly we have nature of certainty and truth as characteristics of conceptual knowledge moving on when we study the relation between epistemology and education we have some educational implications of epistemology to begin with so we could discuss the purpose of schooling so we know that it promotes spiritual and intellectual development it produces competent and self actualized adults who become useful citizens of the state and effective members of the society as well then we have the curriculum which stresses the eternal ideas of the past like great works of literature philosophy politics history art and of course the sciences as well so preferred methods of instruction which are lectures discussions reflection and the socratic method which is dialogue we've also got nature of learner since every student has a mind soul and spirit capable of emulating the absolute mind and absorbing ideas from books and teachers every child varies as well so we need to have a special focus on the nature of learner as well then we've got the role of teacher which is being the role model with logical thinking and reasoning and the authority with extensive knowledge about the great books we have also got some implications for educators which can be broadly mentioned like beginning with we could say that to teach students how to decide whether a particular piece of information counts as genuine knowledge or whether it is no more than the best guess we can come up with at a moment so that would be a part of we could say what is knowledge but secondly we could also discuss what are the best and most secure ways of acquiring knowledge so to teach students how to determine whether a particular piece of information 
has been acquired in the proper way or not whether there are good reasons to think that it is correct or not whether there are good reasons to think that it could be false after all even though there is strong evidence for it thirdly we could discuss what is the value of knowledge to teach students how to determine what the goal of inquiry is in a given situation and to evaluate whether a particular piece of information or knowledge is worth having so epistemology encompasses the construction of concepts the nature of conditions and the validity of the senses without it we would have no reason to believe in thoughts and actions teacher would have no reason to give tests or assign class work because there would be no difference between truth and error there has been development of epistemology in indian philosophy as well we have got the philosophical basis of knowledge according to the indian philosophy and philosophy in sanskrit has been divided into two schools the astic or the nastic the astic school can be called the orthodox school and the nastic school can be called as the heterodox school now the first one which is the orthodox school means one who believes in the authority of the vedas it can be explained that astic means a, means one who believes in god here it does not mean one who believes in rebirth necessarily all the six brahmanical systems accept the vedic authority and are therefore called astika the this class includes six systems of indian philosophy which are collectively known as shard darshan the second school of philosophy which is heterodox means an atheist or one who does not believe in god it has three systems which include buddha and jain philosophy all these are non vedic schools the nastika system of jain and buddha also believes in rebirth according to manu nastika is a person who challenges the authority of vedas however there are other methods of classification as well but we are going to move on and we are going to discuss the main philosophical schools of indian philosophy now there are seven broad main schools of indian philosophy we'll begin with the first one which is nyay nyay school was founded by sage gautama 16 major topics were discussed in this system the most important one is uh, praman the source of valid knowledge so nyay is a school of logic and all other schools of indian philosophy use the nyay system of logic in whole or in part as a foundation for philosophical reasoning and debate the four aspects of epistemology are subject object cognition and praman in nyay school the second school is sankhya so these are in no particular order as such the sankhya school was given the philosophy was is believed to be founded by maharishi kapil sankhya philosophy begins with the knowledge of nature and its origin sankhya is a dualistic philosophy that believes in the coexistent and interdependent realities conscious purush and unconscious prakriti Sankhya states that all valid knowledge has three factors mainly which are subject object and the ground resource of knowledge which is praman the sesaka school of philosophy was founded by kannada which is associated with the nyay system this school discusses seven major topics which are substance quality action generality uniqueness inherence and non existence This school is called so because it considered uniqueness as an aspect of reality and studies it as a separate category. Under the topic of substance it deals with the physics and chemistry of the body and the universe. Its practical teaching emphasizes dharma the code of conduct that leads man to worldly welfare and to the highest goal of life. Fourthly we have the yoga school so yog and sankhya are allied systems although yoga philosophy was known even in the vedic and pre-vedic periods it is systematically 
it was systematically formalized by and codified by patanjali in about 200 bc so the yoga sutras contain 196 aphorisms which are divided into four sections yoga studies all aspects of human personality and teaches one how to control the modifications of the mind through practice of meditation detachment and surrender to higher consciousness the next school is mimamsa jamini is known as the founder of the system this system accepts the ved as the final authority on all questions it provides a comprehensive method for interpreting and understanding the underlying underlying meaning of the ved it lays great emphasis on rituals worship and ethical conduct and provides a systematic lifestyle and direction mimamsa offers guidelines for practical application of vedantic theory the school is foremost in the analysis of sound and mantra and it admits two kinds of knowledge immediate and mediate the school is divided into two groups purva mimamsa and bhatta mimamsa the first one was founded by prabhakar and the second one was founded by kumarila bhat therefore named so the next school of philosophy is vedanta Vedant was taught and practiced by the sages of the Vedas and Upanishads and was handed over through a long line of sages. Ved Vyas is considered as the founder of Vedant he codified these teachings in the Brahma Sutras until the time of of Shankara Vedanta was mainly transmitted through oral tradition but sometime between 6th and 8th century AD The major schools of Vedanta are Advaita which is non-dualistic we have Dvaita which is dualistic then there is Dvaita Dvaita which is both dualistic and non-dualistic we have also got Vishishta Dvaita which qualifies non-dualism and Vishuddha Dvaita which means pure non-dualism Lastly Advaita Vedanta states that knowledge requires neither means nor any proof since it is self illuminated it is self proved so basically Advaita philosophy denies the reality of the truth of name and form as presented by the sense organs and so it can neither rely upon the knowledge given through sense nor can it make any use of it to support its contentions however helpful it may be in common sense life so hence it recognizes all means of knowledge and all knowledge acquired through them as unreal from the transcendental standpoint but none can deny their importance in the practical world before one gets the transcendental knowledge of course hence we have completed epistemology of indian philosophy in the next video lecture we are going to read and study the epistemology of western philosophies if you have any doubts regarding this feel free to contact us the contact details have been mentioned below